Hello, welcome. You are listening to Dr. Shushma Singh. Today in Unit 27 Industrialization, let us start our lecture with topic Social Thinkers on Industrial Society. Many social thinkers of late 19th and early 20th century were seized of changes that were brought about by industrialization and the characters that were part of these emerging societies. Thus, we find many early sociologists invariably contrasted earlier pre-industrial societies with industrial society resulting in classification and typologies of society for instance Tony, Gamis Craft and Giselis Craft, Durkheim's contrast of organic solidarity and mechanical solidarity, Manny's status and contract and Spencer's militant and industrial society or Marx's more elaborate classification societies which was based on the mode of production and which included stages such as the primitive communist, ancient, federal and capitalist. These theories and typologies tended to be evolutionary in their approach as inevitable historical process was visualized. They all tried to look for fundamental organizing principles behind industrial societies which was then contrasted with non-industrial or pre-industrial society. For St. Simon and the Comte who followed, industrial society was to be contrasted to military society. The latter was organized around plunder, waste, display and former were organized around the orderly output of goods. For St. Simon, there were four dimensions of, to an industrial society. It was considered with production. Its methods were those of order, certainty and precise, precision. It would be organized by new men, engineers, industrialist planners and it would be based on knowledge. For Tony's, it was impersonal relationships based on contract which characterized modern industrial society rather than the face-to-face -face interaction in smaller societies. Durkheim in a seminal vein was looking at not only the basic principles of division of labor but he looked at various institutions which are held together by such elements as mechanical and organic solidarity as well. Let us examine some of these writings on industrial society in detail. We will look at writing of Marx, Weber and Durkheim and as they are the most foundational of all thinkers in their analysis of industrial societies. Let us discuss Karl Marx. Marx's theory is well elaborate and covers not only the contemporary situation of his time but attempts to reconstruct the political economy of human history. In his analysis, the present industrial economy is a capitalist mode of production. It was Friedrich Eagle who Candled Marx's interest in the working class situation. He deepens this interest with his philosophy of historical materialism. According to Marx, what distinguishes the capitalist mode of production from the previous federal mode of production is that labor becomes a commodity. When peasants became free to sell their own labor power, they needed to do so because they no longer possessed their own land or tools necessary to produce. People sell their labor power when they accept compensation in return for whatever work they do in a given period of time. In other words, they are not selling the product of their labor but their capacity to work. In return for selling their labor power, they receive money. 
which allows them to survive. Those who must sell their labor power to live are proletarians. The person who buys the labor power generally someone who does own the land or technology to produce is a capitalist or bourgeois. Capitalists take advantage of the difference between the labor market and the market for whatever commodity is produced by the capitalist. Marx observed that in practically every successful industry input unit costs are lower than output unit prices. Marx called the difference surplus value and argued that this surplus value had its source in surplus labor. Marx believed that surplus value appropriated from labor is the source of profit. In a sense, the working class is exploited for its labor. The wages they earn are enough to keep them at subsistence level because wage workers sell their labor power to earn a living and the capitalists own the labor process. The product of the workers' labor is alien to the wage workers. It is not his or her product but the product of the capitalist. Marx calls this separation of labor process from oneself as alienation. Alienation, Marx says, is a feature of the industrial capitalist society where worker is not only a commodity but the process of production and the product which the worker has produced is entering. The worker has no control over what she or he produces. Marx points out workers are alienated in several distinct ways from their products as externalized objects existing independently for their makers from the natural world out of which the raw material of these products has been appropriated from their own labor which becomes a growing necessity instead of a worthwhile activity and from each other as the consumers of the composite products. These dire conditions according to the Max, Marx are the invariable consequences of industrial society. Marx did not visualize this dehumanized existence of the workers in an industrial capitalist system to be inescapable. He along with Eagles Angels came with the revolutionary way out. They not only developed a critic of the conditions but a political action in communist manifesto. Marx envisioned that workers who were exploited soon would rally together to overthrow the capitalists and that increasing class antagonism would result in revolutionary overthrow of the capitalist and means of production would be wrested from them. Marx is one of the most influential and inspiring thinkers of our times. His prescription for a world free of conflict was attempted in a reformulated way by Soviet Russia and other communist countries. The collapse of such economies has made Marxist critics more virulent. Even before that, his critics had pointed out that the increasing class antagonism he predicted never actually developed in the Western world following industrialization. While socio-economic gaps between the bourgeois and proletariat remained Industrialization in countries such as the United States and Great Britain also saw the rise of the middle class not inclined to violent revolution and of a welfare state that helped contain any revolutionary tendencies among the working class. While the economic devastation of the Great Depression 
broadened the appeal of marxism in the developed world future government safeguards and economic recovery led to a decline in its influence despite this criticism marx's basic proposition continued to inspire not only as a critic in academic circles but as an inspiration for all kinds of movements and his views on industrialization and capitalism still hold sway let us now turn to our attention to max weber who wrote about the rationalization principles that inform modern industrial world here we want to close this lecture thanks for listening